What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. As someone who has spent the last 20 years building cars like these and the last six years making a living building cars like these, I have learned quite a few things about building cars in general. In today's video, I wanna share with you guys some tips that I think will help you when it comes to building your own cars. So first thing is first, this is my 2008 BMW 135. It is converted over to a 1 M clone is the N54, does have a precision dock race, 6266 top mount turbo with the T51R mod, in addition to a ton of other goodies. I have an entire build list of this car linked in the description if you guys are interested in the parts that are on this car. But like I said, you guys, in today's video, I wanna share with you some tips that I learned along the way of building cars like this. This car has taken me a year and a half to build up to this point. However, we are far from done. We have a lot more work to do, but I think now is a good time to show you guys the progress and talk a little bit about some of the things that I went through building all of my cars in general. I think when it comes to many goals in life, including goals like builds. It's really important to visualize the outcome of that build. That is something that I do every time I am about to build a car. I can actually see exactly what that car is going to look like, all of the modifications that I want to do to it. But being that these cars have so much work that needs to be done, especially when it comes to these larger builds, I think it is always wise to write down and create a list of everything that you would like to see on that car in the future. That is something that I do with every single car that I build before I even purchase the car. This does a few things. It clarifies my goals when it comes to the build. It helps me understand what kind of budget I'll be looking at for the build. And it makes me do the research beforehand so I understand specifically what I am getting into when I'm trying to build the car that I want to build. A build like this can get pricey. There is a lot of work done to a 1M clone just in general to make it look like this. But then of course you want to go one step further and start doing things like the E92 M3 subframe with the E92 M3 differential, upgrading the drivetrain, upgrading the engine, specifics like bolt-ons or even your top mount turbo. There is just so much that goes into a build like this and creating a list beforehand really helps you visualize what that car will look like in the end and what you can expect to pay, how much you can expect to have to spend on a build like this. Luckily, I'm able to do a lot of the labor myself at my shop when building cars like this, but I would say just in parts alone, this car is probably around the forty dollars to $50,000 mark. Now, by today's standards, if you're looking at SEMA builds, is that a ton of money? Not really. It is a good chunk of change, though, especially if you're putting that kind of money into a car that was made in 2008. So making that list up front really helps you visualize what the end product will look like and how much that might cost you. So it's no secret that this car did not start out this way. It's obviously much different than when I first bought it. And when I first bought this car, it didn't run, it didn't have a motor in it, it didn't have a transmission in it, it didn't even have a front end. All the parts for the car were literally sitting in the interior. It was in shambles. The car had sat in the grass for two years. It was a lot to chew off and I had big goals, big dreams of how this car could turn out and I knew that it would take a lot of time. But one thing that I had to do that I think made a really, really big difference is I just started working on this car and building it simple. I didn't go crazy right off the jump. I didn't try to accomplish everything overnight. I just started simple. My first goal for this car, get it running. That's all I cared about. I just wanted to get the car running. And a lot of times with these sort of projects, they seem so big and there's so much work that has to get done that just by starting simple and just getting that ball rolling, the momentum is there. And then in the future, you can end up building something greater. In general, people just get so overwhelmed by how much work needs to get done that they don't do anything because the list is so long. And by starting simple, you at least get that ball rolling, which is sometimes the most important part. In 
In today's world, everything is online in social media, and there are so many ways to be influenced and judged and criticized by so many people. One thing that I have learned over the years of building cars in the public eye is that it is extremely important to trust your own judgment. Constructive criticism is always a nice tool to have. There's nothing wrong with people offering their opinions or suggestions for your builds, but it is always important to stay true to the list that you have made and the type of car that you want to build. At the end of the day, you have to remember why you're building the car that you want to build. There's a reason why you are selecting the type of modifications that you are selecting. It's obvious that over time, your style is going to change. The type of cars that you want to build is going to change. Your goals are going to change. But in general, it is good to always trust your gut, always trust your own judgments, and make sure that you're building the car for you and not anybody else. I come from a long list of cars that I have built. The first car that I ever decided to build in the public eye was a BMW 328. Yes, a four banger BMW, one of the lower trim models of the F chassis. The 328 was far from impressive, but what it did was it allowed me to grow, it allowed me to learn, and it gave me the confidence to build my cars for me and not anybody else. When I was building the 328, I received constant criticism. Why aren't you building an M3? What a waste of money. What a waste of time. The criticism goes on and on and on. But I will tell you what, if I had never built a BMW 328, I would have never built my 135. I would have never built the countless M3s that I have built. I would have never owned an M4 GTS. I would have never gone down this journey, this path of building cars in the public eye and turning this into an actual job that pays me money that I can live off of, that I can fund these types of builds with. So yes, while the 328 may have not been impressive, it was the catalyst for what was to come in the future, and I always knew that. The point is, I trusted my judgment all along. Another tip that I have for you guys is to experiment. When it comes to trying out different setups on cars, different modifications, different styling, different design, it's really important to just try different things. Don't get stuck with one set of wheels on the car because that's the one that you thought originally had to go on the car. It's okay to experiment. When I first built this car, I had upgraded twins on it. Despite what everybody was telling me to go single right away, I was like, well, I really wanna try the upgraded twin turbos because I was so new to the N54 platform. I didn't quite know what that would be like or what that journey would feel like or even what it was like building a twin turbo N54. In the long run, I learned that the single turbo is just the way to go. It's better all around. I don't regret going with the twins in the beginning because it allowed me to come from a place of more experience down the road and actually give people real reasons as to why I think it makes more sense to have a single turbo setup versus a twin turbo setup in an N54. And I wasn't just saying that without experience. I learned that over time. And none of that would have happened if I had listened to what everybody else was telling me. I've also gone through multiple sets of wheels with all of my cars. I always try different things out. I will have a general idea of what I want the car to look like in the beginning, but I always try things out. Different suspensions, different carbon parts, different interiors, different upgrades in the engine. I just think it's very important to always experiment. Another tip that I wanted to share with you guys is to remember to enjoy the process of building your car. Sometimes it can be very frustrating. Sometimes you just want to speed line everything, make it happen overnight. In today's day and age with social media, it seems as though everybody is building a car overnight. They go from a car with no front end, no chassis, nothing to a complete SEMA build in 24 hours. I'm here to tell you that that is not realistic. 
fantastic. I'm also here to tell you that you will not enjoy that as much as taking your time and enjoying the actual process of putting in the wrench hours, the blood, the sweat, the tears when it comes to building a car of this caliber. As the saying goes, it is not about the destination, it is about the journey. If there is anything that this build in particular has taught me is that good builds do take time. This one has taken me about a year and a half to get it to this point, which in general I think is pretty quick for how incredible this car has turned out and how far it's actually come. We redid everything and we did that in about a year and a half. By today's standards, that's super slow. But I'll tell you what, this car has taught me so much because I took my time. I enjoyed each phase and element of that build process. And when you allow yourself to really enjoy those stages, you are so much more proud of what you build when you get closer to the finish line. I have gotten the bulk of everything that I want to do done, but there's still some very, very important things that I want to do to this car. But one of the biggest things that I have learned that sort of contradicts everything that you see online is to just enjoy the process. Don't feel like you need to do this overnight. It will take time. All good builds take time time. And if you take more time and put more effort into it and trust that process, you're probably going to end up keeping that car for a lot longer as well. The next tip I have for you guys is to always remain original. I feel like today all of these builds that we see online are just copycat builds of other cars. Don't be afraid to try things that are a little bit more unique or different than what we see every day on Instagram or YouTube. That is what's going to set your cars apart. That is what is going to individualize the way that you build cars. Human beings are pack creatures. They like to always go with what other people are doing and agree with what other people are saying. If you want to stand out, it is important to always try and be as unique as possible, as original as possible, and just trust your gut. What you like is what you should do. Don't worry about the outside forces of social media and the car community in general. Just stay true to you and be original when it comes to your build. tip that I have for you guys is to allow mistakes to happen when you are building cars. We live in this world that everyone assumes that build processes and journeys like this are supposed to be perfect. Everything is supposed to work out the first time the way you want it to. Let me tell you something. When it comes to building cars, that is not the case. There are always going to be variables. There are always going to be hiccups and mistakes are going to happen. But I'll tell you what, every time that I've had a mistake, it was a learning experience. It wasn't a loss. It was a learning experience. Even when my B58 engine failed in my 340, that was a learning experience. I had so many people that reached out to me and said, oh my God, what an L. You must feel horrible. How embarrassing. I learned so much through that entire experience because it forced me to learn more about that motor, about why it happened, about what could happen in the future, about certain turbos that are offered out there. The point is that sometimes you need to allow for those mistakes to happen in order to get better in order to improve. I think in today's society, so many people look down on making mistakes, but in reality, mistakes are good for you. That's the only way that we learn is when we do things wrong. And if you think that you are going to navigate through a build or life in general without making mistakes, you are only fooling yourself. It's okay to embrace those mistakes, embrace those losses, and turn them into learning experiences. <laughs> The next tip that I have for you guys is to never compare yourself to others. I'm starting to think that a lot of these tips that I'm giving you guys when it comes to building cars are also very true just in life in general. It is so difficult to exist in today's world with social media, influencer fame, these builds being built overnight with what seems like $100,000 in parts on them. You guys have to remember that God put you on earth to have your own individualized journey and experience. It is not going to be the same as anyone else's. You have to embrace that. There are so many people out here that get depressed when they see other builds that are better or other people building builds faster 
faster. I even have people in my comments like, oh man, I wish I could do this at that speed or I wish you could come and build my car or it must be nice, all of this, because people are comparing their own individual experiences to mine, which is silly. If I compared my builds to people, let's say, who are building cars for SEMA, I would feel like I'm not doing things fast enough at a high enough quality. I know that at this point in my life, I am building the cars for me at my speed that I'm meant to be building them. And at some point, hopefully they'll be at that level. But it's important to remember that we are all having our own individualized experience here on Earth. And especially when it comes to doing the things that we love, like our passion and our hobbies, like building these cars, my experience is gonna be different than anyone else's experience. So there's really no sense in me comparing my cars to anyone else's, and you shouldn't either. This goes back to one of the other tips that I was mentioning. You gotta just enjoy the build process. You have to just enjoy that learning experience. Each car that I get into when I build, the most exciting part for me is the fact that I get to research and learn an entire new chassis. I know that by the time I'm finished building that car, I'm gonna become a better person in general, and I'm gonna become a better builder, a better mechanic, and I'm gonna have so much more knowledge when I finish that build. But if I sat there and I compared myself with every single car that I was going to build to other people who have already built those cars, I can tell you that I would never have gotten to the point that I'm at right now. So we're gonna wrap this one up, you guys, but I hope that this list of tips will help you when it comes to building your own cars. These are things that I've learned over the past 20 years and just suggestions that I have for you guys. If you're interested in getting into this line of work or you just enjoy building cars and you wanna get better at it, I think that these techniques and these skills could help you. But as always, I appreciate you guys and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. If you're interested in any merch, we'll have it linked down below, but we'll see you next time. Peace.